What's that one? Flipped? Flipped. Is, is it flipped? Something, something yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Probably. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> Welcome to Crashing with Friends podcast. We are on episode 149. 149. So close to 150. Like I'm the host, subscribe. Jackson Brayman. What? Oh, dude, just like and subscribe. Oh, yeah. Do that. Like it. Subscribe it. <laughs> Rewind it. <laughs> Bathe in it. Yeah. And then repost it. And then like it again and subscribe it. And then share with your friends. Delete all your social media. Go out into a cabin in the woods. Start building some bombs. No. <laughs> nah. But listen to this podcast. Let's go and get into it. <laughs> Kyle, how's your week going, man? It was a really good week, dude. Um, Actually, let's. we should probably start with Matt. Matt's on a time schedule here. Sure. You know? Let's go ahead and get Matt in here. Matt. Okay. Uh, Sorry to cut you off there, Kyle. Hey, I cut you off <laughs> weekly with this, so you're good. My week was pretty normal, boring. Uh, just a lot of work. A uh, whole lot of work. Uh, trying to think of if I even really did anything this week, but I can't think of anything special or crazy. I like at all. Just trying to survive the heat because... It's hot out there, and then like some like working for FedEx, some of our trucks, most of our trucks don't have AC, so mm-hmm. it gets pretty brutal out there. I bet, dude. Like around eighty to ninety, almost to a hundred stops, and then with it being like ninety something degrees, with the heat index probably even higher. Mm-hmm. It's it's a chore, but it brings it brings it out of you. But uh, you know, I I stay keep. I just keep my head above water on it. <laughs> That's pretty much all I got. I don't. I don't. I don't. It'd be crazy as fuck if you drown in a UPS truck or a FedEx truck. Was it being so hot? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They'd be saying, "How'd they get all that water in there? It's so hot." How much freaking. water do you have to drink, like on those days? So like, uh, I, I, so like with when you're sweating you want to like drink stuff that has like electrolytes like uh body armor powerade and gatorade those are the, you know the three main ones uh if you just drink straight water you're going to drain your body out of all the electrolytes it has in it mm-hmm. and then you're going to end up with heat exhaustion you're going to like cramp up and like it's pretty much the opposite of what you're trying to do will happen start getting cold yeah, yeah, you like you you go through the same like uh, things as a heat stroke. We had mm-hmm. this happen to a driver last year. He said he told me straight up. He's like, I was just, I was like, I was drinking a lot of water. He's like, I figured it'd be fine. And then like uh, outside of the skin, you could see like the electrolytes and salts and stuff dried up from the sweat mm-hmm. because he had he drained his whole body of it. But I'll drink like four or five Powerades a day. Nice. If I'm in a truck that doesn't have AC, yeah. Are they supplied? No, no. That's ba- fucked. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little messed up. Like basically, we we're in charge of uh, like getting our own drinks, but we could turn into like our receipts and stuff for like foods and stuff like that mm. uh, to our contractor, our boss, and then she can do a tax write off, make a little bit more, you know, money back from it. But, yeah, other than that, it's pretty much on us to have our drinks and stuff. Have you thought about mixing your own Gatorade? I do that. Really? Yeah. Like, I haven't thought about that. There's, like, different flavored powder, and I found that you can, like, mix the different flavors together and make new combinations, and that's pretty fun. Uh, I haven't really thought about that. I, I like, I'm, my favorite's always been, pa- like, now it's Powerade, it's Powerade. over yeah. Gatorade. I feel like Gatorade has that, it has, I don't know, that some kind of flavor to it i don't know if it's like one of the minerals that's in it or something like mm-hmm. that but i hadn't thought about that there well, might be powerade powder possibly i haven't really looked into it but yeah i think you're right but that's interesting it'd probably be cheaper for you overall you know powderade i had to say it yeah powderade powderade <laughs> that's pretty much all i got this week <laughs> nice coil yeah How's it going, dude? It's been good, man. Really good, actually. Uh, I took Friday off and uh, went and played went and played fishing. 
when fished for the first time since I was like six. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, there's a reason for that. Uh, when I was like really young and throughout my teenage years, my uncle was a freaking dick to me at all times of my life. Once in a while, he'd be really cool, and then he'd be a complete asshole. But we were fishing, and every time I would get my hook snagged or anything, he would treat me so awfully, man. It was just like I had a bad feeling about it every time. But my son loves to go fishing, so he I just keeps talking about it. So I finally was like, all right, fuck it, I'll do it. And I had a good time. Um, at the beginning, I wasn't really digging on it just because... Um, the new reels that we got were just weren't working. The new like fishing poles, but uh, I got them all fixed and um, started having a good time. Yeah, got a couple bites. Didn't get anything to come in. You know, because I don't yeah. know what the fuck I'm doing. I heard that uh, after I got a couple bites, that they told me, yeah, once that happens, you got to jerk it and get the hook to hook up in its mouth or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, no idea. I just started reeling. Once I felt it on the hook, I was like, okay, it's time to reel. I was like, no, I guess you gotta whip it into its mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. hook the side. The little things. <laughs> Tribal knowledge. You gotta, you gotta practice. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. But that was cool. Um, had a good time doing that. Uh, yeah. Um, also, I've been playing a lot of disc golf, just like always. Had some bogeyless rounds recently which is always good um yesterday i played had no bogeys shot negative two which is uh, not not too bad for where i was playing um checked out uh alien romulus really good movie we'll talk about that a little later and spoil a little bit whenever matt leaves he's gonna leave here in a little bit a little early but uh other than that man just loving life Went to um, my son's open house. Saw a bunch of just crazy looking people. I was walking around. I was like, man, it is amazing how many crazy looking people there are in this world. All shapes and sizes. And they all have kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they fuck. <laughs> yeah. And they get freaky. <laughs> and they have sex. And then they make all these crazy looking kids that also, I'm like, these kids look nuts. Like you, you almost feel sorry for some kids, yeah. right? It's like you are the result of some crazy breeding, like that you had no control over. You know, yeah. <laughs> obesity times obesity equals super obesity. Yes, in kids, and and some kids, it's just like they have no, like they're born into a, an obese family, and they could be probably skinny, but like all that f food and stuff in their environment, like yeah, yeah you're gonna end up fat or yeah, obese, so you fun. know. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody can change, and if you ha if you feel happy in your own skin, then you feel happy in your own skin. Yeah, just check out that one dude that was in uh, Remember the Titans, that big old fat dude. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know who you're talking about. I've seen him. He yeah. lost so much weight. It's insane. he's like muscular now, dude. Mm -hmm, but he still has a lot of like excess skin. Yeah, he had a lot of weight, man. Mm -hmm. He was a big dude. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. also the. Uh, he was also in um, Butterfly Effect and Boy Meets World. and Oh, yeah. I, I completely forgot he was in Boy Meets World. Yeah. But butterfly Effect is so traumatizing. It is traumatizing. When I think of Butterfly Effect, I always think of the two spikes on the freaking bang. You know, like the two. Yeah. <laughs> what the shit, Holmes? <laughs> you got fucking holes in your hands, man. <laughs> that movie is it's it's fucking wild. intense, dude. And then he wakes up that one time and he's got no arms yeah, and shit. It's that's like, the, yeah. that's the what one thing. the fuck? Oh, man. I can't. That part just gets me. Yeah. Mm. The little things. <laughs> that's why you don't fuck with fireworks. True, man. <laughs> True. You become a mangled mess after fireworks. <laughs> fireworks can really mess you up, man. That's true. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Just do what I do. Just close your eyes and then <laughs> rub your eyes really hard. Saves on fireworks. Okay. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Saves you from Brilliant. fireworks. <laughs> yes. It's 4th of July every day, you know, when you do that. Yep. <laughs> Man. <laughs> what do you do for about the explosions? That's, that's half the fun, though. <laughs> do it while you're driving. Get some extra fun out of it. <laughs> 
oh, in the great. passing lane. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. Um, but that's really been my week, man. Over to you, Jack. What about your week? Uh, it's been very bittersweet. Um, got a call about uh, the new job saying like, hey, we'd like to hire you. And I'm like, all right. Uh, sent in uh, the first round of stuff that they said that they were going to send out to me, like the assessment and stuff. And now I'm waiting for the other stuff that they were sending out. So the second round of stuff. Um, because I got that, I was like, yo, my old job. I told them, I was like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and put my two weeks notice in. But and I'm also going to air my grievances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was... <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, it wasn't like super hardcore, like, like, yo, fuck this job and all that stuff. I didn't say anything like that. I was just like... I'm going to go to the job where uh, they actually give out raises that is more than 25 cents. And I'm also going to go to a job where they actually will promote within. And I was basically just going down the list of like all the new stuff I was going to get. I was like fucking paid holidays, bringing benefits. benefits, PTO. And I was saying all this at the same time while there is like three or four people like waiting to do interviews. Uh-huh. <laughs> like sitting at the table <laughs> and the owner was right behind me he was like you could just go home <laughs> so yeah I do not have a job anymore <laughs> <laughs> that's just love it when that two weeks notice turns into a two weeks vacation <laughs> yeah so um, I did learn my lesson I'm never going to give my two weeks notice. <laughs> I will give my two weeks notice on the day that I am leaving and then never come back just to say fuck them <laughs> nah, I wish in hindsight I would do it to them, but yeah, this new job probably won't do that. <laughs> nah, I wouldn't do it either. Wild and mm-hmm. just wild. Well, Jackson, I'd like to say congratulations. Hey, thank you. Big yeah. time. Big time. I do gotta say, I have been a huge bundle of nerves ever since like I have been laid off just because it's like the new job is not concrete yet you know you got the mix in you, the, the concrete's poured and, mm-hmm. and and everyone's trying to love and right now i'm leveling it out and i'm trying to get it to set and make it look good and i'm sitting there waiting for the broom to put the texture on top yeah have you already troweled it have i already troweled it troweled did you trowel it trout trowel it <laughs> <laughs> yeah did you use your trowel what do you don't, just keep going, man. Put your hands in it. <laughs> when you say trowel, I was like like a pig trowel. Like, I mean, it's like, that's all I can think of. Is that the vibrating stick that gets the bubbles out? or what Yeah, it? Like, uh, like I think it also like, it just kind of evens it out a little bit more or stuff like okay. that. Yeah. Right. But uh, you, did you do put your hands in it? Nah, not yet. Nice. I'll put my hands in it like right uh, Never mind. <laughs> Maybe it was a bad metaphor. <laughs> Maybe it was a bad metaphor I was going for there. But, uh, yep. Yeah. Also watched Alien Romulus, thanks to Connor. He got my ticket for me. Yeah, no problem, dude. I'll get his future ticket. <laughs> it's going to be so cool, man. <laughs> you're, gonna keep, you're not going to believe how big that ticket is. <laughs> With that ticket out, you're going to be like, oh my God, it's so big. <laughs> for me? What's the. But, uh, What's the next big movie? For for me, it's Terrifier 3. But, like, what's the next big movie? There's always a new movie coming out. So, what is the next big movie? For me, I think it's that piece by piece movie. That Lego movie about Pharrell. Oh, wow. That's not, that's probably one I will not see in theaters. I'll wait for it to come out on digital. Yeah. But,. It does, I am intrigued to see it, but I am going to 100% see Terrifier 3 in theaters. Mm. They're, they've done a couple of things that I'm like stoked about. For one, they're shortening the length from Terrifier 2 because Terrifier 2 was like a two and a half hour movie, which for that kind of movie is long as fuck. Is very <laughs> yeah. Long. yeah. But at the same time, he's like, the fans gave me so much money from the crowdfund. I felt like I had to give them more. Out of it, so 
I respect him for that. But he took the criticism that it was too long. He was like, all right, I'm just going to make Terrifier 3 shorter, but I am going to amp up the crazy. So That's what you got to do with horror movies like that. You got to put a bunch of crazy, well-written crazy in a short time frame. I think you can make a pretty good horror movie that way. Say 90 minutes, is that the good? 90 to maybe 110 minutes, is that the sweet spot yeah 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 it all depends on the kind of horror movie though because it it is a good example of like two hour length is a good amount of time for that movie you know uh the haunting you guys remember that Mm -hmm. owen wilson gets his head knocked off yeah (laughs) why would you fucking stand in why would you stand in the chimney when you've seen that thing go by before? <laughs> God, every yeah. time I think about that movie, I'm like, why the fuck did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, getting way far on Elden Ring. Sounds like it. Uh, I beat the fire giant, finally. And I have burnt the Erd tree. The Erd tree is burning. Burn it down. (laughs) Yeah, now I'm at this uh, new spot where it's like taking me... I I can't remember what it's called, but it takes me like way across the map and it's like its own castle in the sky with a bunch of tornadoes everywhere. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, I've Mm -hmm. been there a few times in that game. Oh, this is scary. (laughs) Yeah. But... uh, That that place is crazy, for sure. But yeah, man, I'm having such a fun time playing Elden Ring. It really is just the perfect game to play with the volume down, like mostly, and then just turn on the TV show or a movie and binge out. Well, I should say like a TV show or a movie that you have seen and you know already. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, that makes no sense. That's not you, the kind of you game. You really got to focus with that game. Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, the, kind of, the perfect game for that is that No Man's Sky game because it's a mindless mm-hmm. go around and fucking collect shit. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll hop back on it eventually. I don't know. I'm like 10 hours in it and I just, it never grabbed a hold of me, but... I'll give it a try again. Connor, how's your week, bro? Oh, man. Um, it's been okay. I uh, I don't know. Just been watching TV, I guess. Uh, Bleach a lot. I'm like most of the way through the Arankar arc, which for anyone that cares, uh, past the Yukiora fight. Um, I really like that show. Having a good time. Started Final Fantasy IV 3D last night. Played like two or three hours of that, just kind of uh, auto battling and leveling up, just trying to get strong, you know. Um, but yeah, the one uh, for Nintendo DS. Uh, yeah, the 3DS or whatever. Wow, or did, you ever, or whatever. did you ever play that one originally? Yeah, I beat it. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I remember a lot of the beginning and a lot of the basic concepts of what's going on, and you know, but it's it's a cool game. So I'm just kind of just doing that. Um, been thinking about playing some other PS like five games and PS4 games, but haven't really done that. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing really going on. So that's about it, man. This morning <clears throat> you saying final fantasy brought me, I was thinking of like when I was earlier and I had a pause, I was like, I know I played something. Yeah. I was picked up final fantasy, final fantasy 12, back, <laughs> final fantasy 12 back up. Kyle having a stroke in real time. <laughs> Yeah, but, I was thinking about that game yesterday, actually. Yeah. yeah, I played like two hours this morning. I just got into the Gambit system, saw Fran and Balthier flying on that, like, material, like, a uh, that motorcycle, air, 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 air motorcycle, yeah. yeah. God, that game is so good, dude. The yeah. Gambit system, I was just running around, like, two hours went by so fast. Mm-hmm. It's, like, so great. I'm skipping all the cutscenes, like, the early cutscenes, because okay. I just don't give a damn. They're really slow at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. The first, like, two hours is so boring. But the fighting is so good, though, yeah. man. Mm, 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 mm. That one's a gem. Sure is. My favorite Final Fantasy game for sure. Mm-hmm. You ever play Final Fantasy games, Matt? I tried like uh, played like the first one a couple times. 
The first one. The very first one. Yeah. But like I, I already knew like that's the completely different from like other Final Fantasies. I, I don't really know. It's just basic everything. It's just very basic, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I never really played Final Fantasy. I, th- I think to the normal person, they think that it's a continuation. Like the whole thing is one series, but it's not. Every game is different. Every game has a different story. I mean, you probably knew that though. With yeah. similar themes. Yeah. yeah, similar themes to crystals and. It just seemed like it, like if it's like, it, at some point it makes a huge change. I I thought it like based on the first, what first two games is like a fantasy like, uh more what was it top down RPG, and then uh it like completely changes up, like everything, and then like it's got a like a, I'm trying to think of the style of it like. It's an RPG, but with a... Uh, Stylistic action yeah. RPG? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Where it's like action, take action, turn actions or whatever. That kind of started at 13, and then, yeah, it just kept going. But it's, like, not fantasy. Like, it's not, like, mid, mid like, magic mages and stuff like that, knights and stuff like that. Like, the first few, first two games, right? I don't know. But like, it, when does when does it like completely change to like weird like technical tech, techno future kind of stuff? That's seven. That's seven. Okay. I believe six also has like robots and like the magic had already been gone for a while, and that one. Um, yeah. So is there just like mm-hmm. a huge jump in timeline? In that series? no, like each like like we were saying, like each one's got its own story, but they've got similar themes, you know. And a lot of them, there are like white mages, black mages, uh, just basic warriors, thieves, and stuff. But then there's also a lot of them where it's like, yeah, they've got those classes, but they don't really look like how they traditionally look in the older ones. Right. Okay. Um. So like when you played that first game, you probably know about like what I was just saying, like the different kinds of mages, like like that kind of stuff will show up in the first like nine games quite often and then like from 10 to to now it's like you do have those like more or less archetypes for characters but they just stylistically look a lot different yeah yeah okay i'm starting to understand more now maybe i should play final fantasy one of these days i feel like i'll probably get sucked in because like every game has like summoners people who can use the different kinds of magic like the fire blizzard thunder and then more advanced magic on top of that like right you know, okay. there's always a character that can steal equipment from a guy so you can get stuff that way if you want to, you know, That's and awesome. usually in all of them, there's also like a mini game, like a card game or something like that that you can do. A lot of them are pretty good, but a few, a few of them aren't that good. Right. But all of them have like good stories. Like once you get to four, like the first three don't really have great stories, but four on, they all have pretty good stories. Okay. And you know, like the stand still and fight thing. Yeah. That ends at Final Fantasy X. Okay. And then what's it like then? At Final Fantasy XI, that's an MMO. And oh, that's okay. just like any other MMO. Yeah, yeah. Final Fantasy XII, that is an MMO without the MMO in it. So it's still a lot of walking around, pushing abilities. But as you're walking around, you're still hitting stuff. But it's like you're not controlling the sword slashes. You're pushing sword slash. Right. Um, and then in 13, that kind of starts changing. 13 is whenever you're actually, when you push square or whatever, or, you know, you actually fight and stuff, kind of. It's like more of a blend from 12 to, thir- to like 15. And then when 15 happens, that's when it's like full on hitting everybody with swords and stuff like that. And like an action game. Similar to Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Okay. And then f- 15 or 16 is full on like Devil May Cry. All oh, right. Yeah. Gotcha. You ever play Devil May Cry? Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. love the Devil May Cry series. 16 is just a completely different game. It's probably one of my least favorite Final Fantasies, to be honest. Really? But everybody, like, Connor loved it, and everybody, a lot of people loved it. It has uh, some of the craziest boss battles I've ever seen. I, it did, I, I think it, sure. I think it would be cool to, like, wh- who do you play as in, in, in that one? Clive. Clive, Clive. Clive Rossfield. Clive. So he's got, like, the buster sword. Like, do you get to... He's he, got a pretty he, big sword. He doesn't have a buster sword, but it is a big sword. Okay. I just think it would be cool to swing a buster sword around, like, Devil May Cry, or... You if know. you ever do want to play a Final Fantasy, you probably should just play Final Fantasy sixteen. Like, if you want to just... A cool action game. And you have a PS5, so... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a pretty cool game. I mean... 
12, I think it's cool, but I'd like say it's... 12 would be the best one, but it's a PS2 game that's been remade for PS4. Okay. So, so would that be playable on PS5? Yeah, you could play that on PS5. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you would love it on PS5. Yeah, yeah probably. But it's probably way better on PS5 than PS4 for sure. Probably. Faster <laughs> load times and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not a loud, fast fan. <laughs> um, quick question. Do you guys have a favorite t shirt that you have now or have ever had? Oh, man. Because I was folding laundry, folding two loads before I came here, and I was folding my Lincoln Park uh, Breaking the Habit t shirt. Oh, and I man. put my hand on it. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? Is this my favorite shirt? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Did you instantly start thinking, should I frame this and never wear it again? No, but I'm like, I was trying to think of all the other shirts that it's like, no, I like that War of Ages shirt, even though I don't wear it. And it's like, I also like that Destiny shirt, even though I don't wear it very often. But it's like, I don't that know. Destiny shirt is sick. It's one of my favorite shirts you have. Damn. Now, man, you just said War of Ages. I had this War of Ages shirt that I loved. Do you remember that? It had like a whole bunch of guns and it was like, oh, yeah. a, it was like almost like a butterfly. People kept saying it was a pot leaf and all that. Uh, like, yeah. Look at this shirt. It's not a pot leaf. I was like, look real close. The tip of the pot leaf is a tank barrel pointing straight up in the air. I was like, <laughs> if you look real close, you can see a bunch of gun barrels. It's like, but no, teachers made me stop wearing it. And that was kind of the genesis of me stopping wearing it. You know, it was like, I can't wear this to school anymore. And then I just shredded it up skateboarding. But God, yeah, that was one of my favorites as a teenager. But just like any other shirt we had as teenagers, it was way too small. I don't know what the fuck we were thinking buying shirts so small. Yeah. That was the style back then, man. We were also growing, so it's like you get a shirt that fits, and then it doesn't fit in like yeah. half a year or yeah. whatever. So. A couple of weeks. So we made it the style to just keep wearing them shirts and be like, fucking skinny jeans, shirt that just barely comes to the belt line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. You got to show off that studded belt, you know? Mm-hmm. My f- One of my favorite t-shirts that I've ever had, I still own, but I don't wear anymore. You guys have seen it a hundred times. It's a, it's a shirt. It's yellow, and Kobe Bryant is on the front. He's got a white towel on, and he's standing in front of a bunch of microphones. Dude, one of my favorite t-shirts I've ever seen. I'll never get rid of it just because it's a Kobe shirt, and I just can't. Can't like do all it, of yeah. my Kobe stuff, I just will never even wear anymore. I don't want to wear it. Yeah. But my wife wears it to bed sometimes, that Kobe shirt, and... <laughs> Primo. Very sexy. What? I'd have to... You're just staring at Kobe the whole time. <laughs> yeah. like I'm just looking down. She's like, are you staring at my cooter? I'm like, nope, staring at your Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what, are, what are you saying into those mics right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to say my favorite shirt. It's got this definitely got some wear and tear on it, so it's it's basically a sleep shirt now. But it's probably my NWA straight out of Compton shirt. Nice. That's an original shirt from like when that album came out. Original <laughs> run. Yeah. So the original shirt. <laughs> so yeah. I got mine. It's not a complete shirt, it's a flannel jacket. But uh let's see how uh, 2017 I went to a Foo Fighters concert at the BOK Center and uh, like I was wearing this like red and black flannel over a white t-shirt just basic and uh, one some dude like in the crowd like we were me and my buddy we were like almost at the stage but we were like midway uh, this one guy just like comes through he's like walking from like from the front of the stage coming through and he's like Look, he points at me. He's like, dude, that's the Dave Grohl shirt. That's the Dave Grohl shirt right there, dude. I'm like, yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, like, Dave Grohl's always wearing red and black flannels and stuff. So mm-hmm. it's like, ever since then, I was like, this is the Dave Grohl shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I went to McDonald's, like, me and my buddy after that concert later that night. And I just, like, looked at the uh, the register or whatever, working the drive through I was like, hey, do I look like Dave Grohl? <laughs> She's like, what? Who's Dave? What? I'm like, Dave Grohl. Do I look like Dave Grohl? (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) So to this day, I still have that flannel jacket from 2017. It's my my Dave Grohl shirt. (laughs) You know, great drummer. Oh, he's on Nevermind. (laughs) Man, that's awesome. That's the Dave Grohl shirt. (laughs) Just cracked me up. Mm. I'm glad that it's got a name, you know? Yeah, yeah. I couldn't think of like a regular t-shirt. Cause like, 
there was like a time in my life where I just wanted to wear white plain t-shirts all the time and I just didn't care for like designs on t-shirts I just wanted to keep it simple and minimal as possible and uh so like it's like my favorite kind of t-shirt is just a plain white tee you know Mm -hmm. like this is favorite band too i bet yeah (laughs) they're they're pretty good hey there delilah don't you think in new york city (laughs) that's matt in the car every day (laughs) sure would like to suck those titties (laughs) <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, like start up the Mustang. <laughs> yeah. Hey there, Delayo, what's it like in New York City? Yeah. <laughs> it's Britney, bitch. <laughs> my name is Matt, let me suck your boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> You're my kind of stupid, Jack. Oh man, Matt, it's nine o'clock, dude. Yeah. All right, so my yo dude is a. Uh, did you guys know they're make remaking Dead Rising, the first one? Yeah, I saw that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, and they're like put in some uh, uh, stuff like controls that, like easier for life, like easier, easier. Okay. I can't remember the name, the phrase, but basically they're making it to where you can move around and aim. Well, I'm forgetting the phrase for it too now. Oh, um, dude, ease, Matt, why did you do ease that? Of comfort. <laughs> no. No. Uh, oh, dude. It's a something of life. Yeah, it yeah. is, man. Quality of life improvement. Yeah, quality, quality of life improvement, <laughs> dude. Quality of life improvements. So basically, <laughs> we almost had a bad spot. Uh, but, uh, it's a something. <laughs> it's something of life. <laughs> like the quickening. Uh. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, yeah, they, uh, Anyways, you can, like, move and aim and, like, throw or t- attack, shoot. Modern controls, probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, quality of life stuff. Yeah, quality of life stuff. Nice. Oh. You can, keep forgetting the phrase, dude. It's, like, slipping from my mind <laughs> as I'm talking. But, uh, yeah, so, like, that seems cool. I've, I played a lot of Dead Rising 1 more than any other one. That, one, that game was everywhere, dude. Mm, yeah, it was the best. It hit right as the Xbox 360 came out. It had yeah. really good controls, and it was like, oh, I mean, not as good as they could be, I guess, yeah. but like yeah. an At open world. Yeah. A open kind mall. Of open mall, yeah. Yeah. Everything was a weapon. Yeah, and there was like lots of little like Capcom um, Easter eggs put in there, like Mega Man helmets and the stuff buster, like that. And, the Mega know. Man Buster. I remember you had to like kill the population in Zombies. To get that Mega Man Buster, and I remember like the way you had to do it was like you had to go to the underground tunnels, like the tunnels underneath the mall, where they have cars, and you drive a certain like path to get to the next car before that car you're driving breaks down, and like the tunnel is just filled with zombies, like completely cramped with zombies. And I remember like taking a certain route to so you can get enough zombie kills, but also like stay on top of like vehicle maintenance. And, like, <laughs> just getting in these different cars. And, like, that's how you had to get... That's what you had to do to get the Mega Man Buster, which is, like, almost a one-off kill, like, one-off hit on, like, all the bosses in that game and stuff and the psychopaths and everything else. Did you guys not do that? I've never uh, played I, any I, of them. Yeah, I've just watched it be played by, like, friends and stuff. <clears throat> oh, got it. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, Chris Blanchard and Andrew Blanchard. Yeah, yeah, they played the crap out of it, and I just watched them play it. Yeah, the first one, we, me and my little brother, we played the crap out of that first one. That's for sure. I guess there's, like, two sides. Like, no, like people watched it be played or just know about it, or you just played the absolute shit out of it, you know? Mm-hmm. But it was amazing, and I'm pretty glad they're remaking it. That's along with uh, Metal Gear Solid 3. I'm excited for that one, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. That one's a big one. They really got to remake. They need to remake the first two of Metal Gear Solids and put them together into one game or something. Yeah, they do. Especially the first one. I think they really need to do something with the first one. The second one is it's mid-playable. The first one, though, is super old. Tank controls and... Right, or... Um, I can't remember, but really they just need to lower the camera for sure. It needs to be in in step with a new game that doesn't need to be top down how that one is. Yeah. Mm. So like Metal Gear Solid five and four. Right, yeah. 
Well, I guess three was like that too. Yeah. Well, I didn't know they were top down like that. I think uh, isn't the second one more of a normal like third person game too? Like, isn't it just the first one that's like it's like a third person set camera? Okay. It doesn't. I, I think it kind of followed you around. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember on the second one, but, but I know the first one's like a top down. Like it is 3D. Everything's like 3D PlayStation graphics and stuff. But I mean, it's just like mostly top down. It wasn't. It wasn't or isometric or whatever it is. I want to say it was like the old Resident Evil games where you like went into a different room and like. Okay. Had yeah. A camera fixed angle. camera. But I can't. I think it moved with you too. I just had like had a, like a fixed angle or something like that. Okay. But also, when you zoomed, didn't you go into first person it on did. the second yeah. game? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, like, that was super, like, the controls on that was super janky. I remember, like, going back to Metal Gear Solid 2 right after 5 because I played 2 whenever I was younger. And I wanted to go back to it, and I was like, man, like, these controls are so hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure, like, because, like, 3 ha is, like, the beginning of, like, a lot of it. Like, timeline-wise, so I'm sure they'll do one and two after that. If they're remaking three, then they're probably going to remake those games. Mm -hmm. I hope so, yeah. All that success from the Resident Evil games being remade, it's like, I can see them doing that. That's true. Konami's tired of making that pachinko money. <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks for stopping by, Matt. Yeah, so later, dude. Thank you guys for the invitation. <clears throat> Guess I got, should I stand for my picture? You guys can just... Yeah, in real time. Present with friends podcast. Oh my gosh. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. So let's get into Alien Romulus, dude. Let's. Let's. So we're going to... Uh, spoiler warning. Yeah, huge spoiler warning. We're well, talking about all of it. So that alien vagina thing where they stuck the electric rod into. What about that? So, like, is that why that one alien had, like, an ele electricity face? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Because uh, on the way home, I kept thinking, why did that alien have electricity in his brain? Like, because it had that cut, and there's, like, electricity sparking inside there. Yeah. So like, did he evolve with the electricity? Is that what happened? Yeah, it's like, did it become an, elect an electric xenomorph? Oh, my God, I didn't like, even consider that. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't even think about that at all. Because, like, it kept showing its head, and I'm like, why is there electricity there? The, like, my eyes just kept going to that every time. So, like, and that's the only thing I could think of is it's probably the from the rod because he got, yes. like, direct yeah. current from the ship, too. It wasn't just a rod. It was connected into the ship, so it was, like, all that electricity. Or I guess this the, the space station, technically. So. <laughs> that's freaking crazy. Yeah. Damn. <clears throat> So what I mean what what score would you give the guys would you guys give the movie? It's like uh, eight, eight ish. Yeah. Like I would say like close to eight, seven and a half to eight. You know, I'd give it probably eight and a half. I would give a higher score if the um, the first I don't know maybe thirty minutes of it wasn't so slow. Yeah, first thirty minutes was real slow. Yeah, they had to they had to build it up. Mm hmm. But I still liked it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I liked the beginning of the movie and everything, but... It helped me care more for, like, the two main characters in the movie, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought, I thought, the yeah, the two main characters did a really good job overall, for sure. I'll, I'll say this. It definitely had the most interesting... Um, what do you call them? The droids or bots? Oh, yeah, a robot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Android. droid? Like, it had the most interesting character arc for, like, that specific, like, type of droid bot, whatever you want to call it. Like, better than Michael Fassbender's, better than, like, the ones they've done in the past. Um, also, like, I really enjoyed, like, how they were like, okay, we are really going to do our best to try to interconnect all of the alien Prometheus covenant and we're going to try to connect mm -hmm. all of that and make it kind of seem, I, I don't know. 
it didn't seem like it was rushed. You know, it felt like it was really well thought out before they decided to like put it out there. Because if you watch Prometheus, like it doesn't really feel like an alien movie at all. And then whenever they made the second one, Alien Covenant, it was basically kind of like a whatever you call it. It was a an agreement with the director whose name is escaping me all of a sudden and the studio saying like, hey, like we want you to continue with the Prometheus story and we want you to finish it, but you needed to make it more like Alien. So that's where Alien Covenant comes from and that's why it's got like a weird feel to it. Also, I didn't dig any of the the creation story, you know, the creator story. I was not a fan of that story at all. Yeah, I agree. I think a lot of people really didn't care didn't care for it. It's one of those things. Is do we really need, do, do we ever really need to know how and why? You know what I'm saying? Nah. Right. I would like to get a third Michael Fassbender movie just to wrap up that trilogy. You know. Because I bet a third one could probably do it justice. And you could just call it the Michael Fassbender Alien Trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll call it that. That yeah. would be weird as fuck. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the, the black goo. Um, I don't know. I, don't, I just don't see a, a point of having it, you know. Um, it is kind of interesting how they distilled the black goo out of the aliens. But I don't know. It's like I don't know. It's it's a MacGuffin, I guess. You know, it's it it is what it is. Could have been anything. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's and the whole human alien at the end of it. Yeah, it was, it was a, okay. I wouldn't say I loved it. It was a weird decision to try to hey, let's bring back something from what is considered one of the worst alien movies, and try the thing that did not work for that movie. It's like. And not only that, but let's try to make it look just fucking way different from that alien and make it look more like a human face. I said to you guys, it both looked like it came out of the fucking Schism Tool music video. (laughs) (laughs) That that hit so hard, Jack. As soon as I saw that, I was just like freaking ding, 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 ding. (laughs) The moment you said that, that's fucking, that's awesome. Uh, Yeah, man. (laughs) It's one of the only tool songs I know is that one. <laughs> Definitely, um, like, it's like, dude, Slender Man. It's like Slender Man with a face, you know? Yeah. Or it looked like, uh, remember uh, the remake of It, whenever the weird painting comes out of the painting? And is like, that's what it kind of looked like, too. Mm. I don't know. Weird, weird choice for how they were going to make it look. But, yeah. Yeah, and like when the uh, when the chick gave birth to it, and she had like the black goo on her boob or something, I'm like, okay, is this dude gonna like just like suck on her booby or something? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like get that black goo milk, but it's like I don't know what he did. Like he's sucking on her chest, but like drinking her blood or something. Oh, shit, dude. So it's like, was she filled with black goo at that point, and he's like just going to like eat the black goo out of her, or what? Yeah, or or just sucking all the nutrients out of her, or something like that. Yeah, you know, I'm not entirely sure what was happening because he he had his own eating system apparently, <laughs> and it was a straw slash ton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I prefer the regular um, alien little mouth compared to the little tongue mouth. That's like not as cool. Yeah, it looked like a parasite or something. You know, l- less of a mouth. Yeah. Like, that's really the only thing that I would change about the movie is just the character design of the final, like, human-alien hybrid. That's the only thing I would have changed on it is, like, just to change change the design on that bullshit. Yeah. I didn't need it personally. See, I didn't brush up against any of that stuff, guys. I didn't, I didn't, like, the alien thing, that the hybrid thing or whatever, I didn't brush up against that. I liked that it was showing its evolution, like, in real time. I liked that it showed its, its tail evolution, like, very quickly happened. Um, I, I, tail evolution? Tail evolution. Yeah. I didn't brush up against that at all. Uh, I, 
in the moment, I was like, this is actually kind of cool. Because I, I had a feeling when that happened, I was like, we're going to see the alien hybrid. Like, we're going to finally see, like, like the renderings and stuff. But in the moment, I was thinking in my head, I was like, wait, was that the rendering from fucking Jurassic Park? That fucked up Jurassic Park movie that was supposed to come out where they were going to have, like, dr- human slash dinosaur hybrids and then that's in the movie I had to like stop myself from thinking that I was like yeah. no 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 Kyle stop stop yeah, stop don't do it no. you're, like, you're gonna start thinking of another movie while this movie's going down and I was like yeah. okay that movie never was made so I was like so gotta stop gotta stop do you guys remember seeing those pictures at all no I remember talking about it like a couple of years ago yeah there was pictures up on um that website we used to look at a lot like at that movie website it was called Screen Rant right is that what it's called probably yeah. Screen Rant's one of those websites right? yeah and they re- they had some like renderings up that was like rumors of like a hu- a human dinosaur hybrid that never happened. Mm. Mm-hmm. But uh, I didn't brush up against that. My fa- what I did brush up against was like the way they freaking rendered the CGI on that android, the broken android from the oh, first movie. They or lost a point because of that dude. Bro- <laughs> <laughs> There was moments where it looked yeah. really janky, but then there was other moments where I was like, this looks fine. And those moments that I thought looked fine were when they were showing it on that old CRT TV and stuff, and it was showing it all the filters and yeah, the scan lines, stuff like that. Yeah. I didn't mind any of that stuff. And I felt like the whole time I was like, man, they're zooming too close on this guy's face. Like, they could have remedied this by zooming out more. Like, we don't need to see his face that well. You know, just mm-hmm. give us a zoomed out view of all the people in the room looking at him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, I did like how they connected a lot of uh, stuff that happened in the first movie into this one. You know, showing, you know, that guy and showing uh, the alien, like, pod thing that was out in space floating around. Because mm-hmm. that's the same alien from the first movie they jettisoned or whatever. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool. Um, you think there will be a second to this one? <clears throat> yeah. I mean... I don't know if it will actually be a full-on sequel, you know? Get the same girl and guy back. Like, who knows about that, but there's definitely going to be another Alien movie coming. Oh, yeah, for sure. I really liked how they did the uh, the 20th Century Fox logo at the beginning. Anytime you mess with that, I always find that really cool. Because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it's so hard for me not to see that and see the it go... Do 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 do, and show like the X still 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 standing. You know what I'm talking about from mm-hmm. all the X Men movies. That's the first thing that I would see when I see the 20th Century Fox thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, I really liked the emphasis on this movie of the face huggers. Like that was like I feel like what like the main threat for a lot of that movie was just so much face hugger stuff. Yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. they did a great job of making the face huggers the creepiest that they've ever been. Yeah, it was like they an army cool. of them. Yeah, they look cool. it was like hands. Yeah, so I kept thinking of me and Connor talking about this is like a, an army of hands chasing you, you know. But it was really cool. And they all have penises that are trying to stick down your throat. Oh, yeah, they really zoomed in on the phallusness of the the freaking penis thing whatever like the, the insertioner or whatever well the creatures are made by hr geiger bro what do you expect right <laughs> that uh, dude is a crazy sexual being <laughs> <laughs> um all of his artwork looks like that shit dude like the crazy like or i should say from like the first alien movie like all the crazy architecture and the look of the a xenomorph specifically itself like, like that's all of his artwork it's like just pulled directly out of his head Something I didn't like is um, whenever they um, initially are getting chased, uh, like the Asian girl has been, you know, face hugged, and then um, they're getting chased in the ship, and she kicks the freaking stick. They like fly sideways until they fly into a hangar, and then stop. I thought that was really dumb. I'm it's like, like, wow, perfect spot for a hangar to be open. Yeah, like show show her kick an autopilot button by mistake to fucking engage it into the hangar or something like be smarter about that. Um, I really enjoyed that battle rifle scene. I thought it's like, okay, they gave me what I wanted out of that. Um, a lot of heads popping. Um, thought that was really cool. But then the whole swirling acid scene, I'm like, eh, I don't really love that. Yeah. Um, there were several moments during the movie. I could just see you kind of moving in your chair. Like, Oh man. 
Yeah. Literally all I could think of during that moment was like, why don't you turn the gravity back on for just one second and then turn it back off. Get the acid on the floor and just have it melt away the floor, but then turn off the gravity real quick to have it stop going down. Yeah. You know. Exactly. That's smart. Um, And then um, I also really enjoyed the visuals of the space station hitting the ring. That was cool. So cool. Yeah, dude. That was dope. I like that. I was up there with like interstellar type cool stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Every time that the android rebooted, I really liked those scenes a lot, especially when he was just like, yeah, or whatever. <laughs> he did something with his hands. Um, when the like face huggers are coming out, I was just like, whatever. Funny. I thought it was going to be more intense, though. I really did. I thought it was going to be more more intense. Yeah, you thought it was going to be more. Uh, Gorish, yeah, stuff. because it's uh, what is his name, Eddie Alvarez, Fetty, Fet. I think I think it is, F- yeah. But it's the same guy who made that first newer Evil Dead movie, so I thought it was going to be more intense. But I wonder if it was one of those things where the studio kind of had to pull back a little bit. Um, we'll let you melt one dude with acid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we'll let you pop one person's face with the alien's mouth. Those are my favorite. And he goes like. And yeah, hits them in the face and bust their face open. Those are those yeah, cool scenes. Very cool. Yeah, maybe they just maybe it was a decision on him. He was like, you know what? I went fucking full out for Evil Dead with the gore. I'm gonna purposely try to rein it back in on this one, and I'm just gonna try to scare him with that. Have you seen one of his other movies, Don't Breathe? I've seen like the first twenty minutes of it, but I've not finished it. Man, I keep hearing it's really good, and I, I've just haven't watched it yet. They made a second one. Yeah. And it's got the guy, I think his name is Stephen Lang. Or is uh, that his name on Avatar? I, you guys know what I'm talking about, though. I think that, I think that's his actual name. Because I think his name on Avatar is different. What is his name on Avatar? <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about, though. Like the, it's yeah. called Taking the Initiative, his, son. His, his name is Stephen Lang. Okay, yeah. Stephen Lang's the, like a blind guy in it. <laughs> Yeah, the corp. You're talking about the corporal guy. Yeah, They're like we're gonna take back this fucking tree or whatever. <laughs> yeah. The unobtainium. He plays Miles Corich. Okay. But yeah, I just need to watch that movie because I like him a lot. He's a cool guy. What Jackson? What do you think are the one thing I want to talk about with you guys? What are the best, like? What is a Mount Rushmore for, like, the best alien-type movies? Alien 1, Alien 2. Yeah, you have to put both. They're two different movies. Right. I'm down with putting those two on there. <laughs> um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. That's That's one that I would put up on there. If you guys haven't seen it, and if you guys weren't a fan of it when you were younger, because it's, it's older, you know, mm-hmm. then you guys probably wouldn't care too much for it. But, dude, the ending of that movie still sticks in my head, man. What happens? Well, basically, Invasion of the Body Snatchers is, like, these little, like, like, these aliens, like, basically take over your body and stuff. And then you just look like a, like, it's kind of like a... Planet assimilation. Is it a hive mind kind of thing? Yeah, it's kind of like that. Okay. So anytime you see somebody that is not part... Like, basically the movie ends with, like, you've been following two characters throughout the whole movie. And at the end of the movie, they, like, split up. I can't remember exactly why they split up, but they end up seeing each other at the very end of the movie. And the woman is walking up to the main character. And she's like, hey! And then all of a sudden the main character just goes... <laughs> just just points and starts going Rah! and she starts screaming no yeah that's how the movie ends it's it's campy i've seen that yeah i've seen that before <laughs> that but i feel that, like right? that one does have to be up there on the mount rushmore just because it, it along with alien it's classic you know you kind of have to put up put it up there and give it its stew give it stew and give it its stew as well give it its stew um <laughs> 
I would I would have said signs up until I'd seen the world or uh, no one can no one will save you. That's what the name of it is, right? Yeah, but I still feel signs is better than no one will save you. You think so? Yeah, no one will save you. Just it had an even more weirder ending than signs. But I still enjoyed it more. I just I just, I brush against the asthma thing, man. Being an asthmatic, I brush against it. Yeah, so I'm just like, this hits too home for you. It hits too home, and I'm like, man, what? You know what I'm saying? Like some of that stuff. I'm like, man, I have asthma. That's not how it works. But still, uh, that movie does is gives me the cr- hardcore heebie-jeebies. And uh, I think the other one has got to be the thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, that first thing is pretty awesome. Especially that scene in the jail cell. But you know who's running the fucking gift shop at the bottom? The faculty. You guys remember that movie? (laughs) Of course. That movie's running the gift shop, dude. Fucking love the faculty, dude. Me too, man. (laughs) What was the uh, cure that they came up with? Was it like salt water or something? Or what was the... In science? No, in the faculty, the thing that they used to like kill the... uh, Oh, no, it was um, caffeine pills. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because he was uh, handing out, like, crushed up caffeine powder as, like, cocaine or speed or whatever he was selling it as. Mm-hmm. I can't remember exactly what he what they called it back then. But, yeah, when they go to Josh Hartnett's house and they see that it's all just caffeine trucker pills, they're like, this is your lab? And he's like, you didn't see any of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like Adderall or something, or I um, probably called it Speed. Yeah, probably just Speed. Yeah, that's like the generic for all that kind of thing back in the day. Was just call it Speed. Yeah, just cause it speeds you up. Yeah, I think they just called it Tweak. If I'm being honest, <laughs> probably. I, I cannot yeah, I for the life of tweak. me remember like exactly <laughs> what it's called. Um, there's the Predator movie, the first one, but I don't know if I necessarily put it up there. Hmm. Because I think of the Predator movies, that newest one is my favorite. Definitely. Prey, yeah. Prey, yeah, Prey is Prey shit. Prey is dope, yeah. Because it's, I mean, I could rewatch that movie right now. That movie is just not campy. It's just survival. It's mm-hmm. so good, man. Prey is the shit. I'm trying to think of some more alien movies that I've seen. Right. It, ones that would possibly be on the you know on the Mount Rushmore because there's I've seen so many alien movies and I'm like that ain't it wait did you battle Los Angeles or whatever that's fucking oh, I called saw that in theater dude god dang that movie sucked okay so did you say the thing earlier or did you say it I said the thing you said the thing okay yeah I am not gonna count it as an alien movie even okay. though this new one tried to make it so okay Fucked off with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> it came from space. I would, I would agree with the thing being on there. I I could probably take off for my personal list. I would take off Alien Two. I know you guys love it. It's just not a horror for me. It's it's more of an action movie for me personally. Yeah. But um. So so if we're doing straight alien horror, you mean then? E.T. <laughs> <laughs> the scariest of the scary. What? Cloverfield? Or? Galaxy Quest. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> fuck. That movie's actually really good. Man. It, is it is good. good. It is good. It's got a lot of well-known actors in it, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, I had a movie come up to my brain and I lost it. Pitch Black is on this list. <laughs> yeah, I it's saw not that. A, it's not a bad movie, but it's definitely it's not, not, a, not a great a, movie. Not making the list. Are there any good Riddick movies? No, I don't think there. Are, any of them are good. There's yeah, the good. I wouldn't go past saying that they're good. Yeah, I wouldn't say they're great. Um, I'm not seeing anything else that I really hate. Life Force. Hey, there you go, dude. I'm gonna watch that. You better. We need to do a. We need to revive our movie watch along just for one episode and watch that for the. 
for you know provide commentary on it. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out from the comments if they want it or not. <laughs> the fourth kind is there, dog shit. There was a time and place where it was good for one night and then scared the shit out of Bo. <laughs> The movie's fucking bullshit. It, yeah. it does the cardinal sin of really, really trying to drive in the fact that everything that you're about to see is real when it's bullshit. Yeah, and that's so dumb, man. You shouldn't be able to do that. What they needed to do is just cut out the whole like f- real footage part and just make it, the mi- make it a Milo Jokers movie the whole time. Yeah. As a matter of fact, change the whole movie up. Put Mia Jovovich in it. And remake, uh, fucking I don't know. <laughs> What's a movie with a bunch of nudity? <laughs> <laughs> Just give me more Mia Jovovich, bro. She is good. Man, I had the biggest crush on her when I was in high school, dude. So many people did, man. She's hot. Yeah, insanely hot. Especially in like the first. I mean, really, all the Resident Evil, Resident Evil movies, she's pretty freaking hot. Mm-hmm. I saw a picture with her, like, she was uh, with Maynard James Keenan, lead senior of Tool. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they were dating or what, but they had, like, the whole couple's pose on, like, a red carpet thing. But she was wearing, like, a kimono dress, and I was like, dude, she's rocking that kimono dress so good. <laughs> <laughs> Kimono dresses are hot. They are. You're not wrong. I'm not seeing any other bangers that's really saying, hey, put me on the list. Because when it comes to alien horror, it's... It's very specific. Yeah, and then you get a lot of dog shit. Right. Like, you're not going to put... So we've got the first alien movie. We've got The Thing. And we got Prey. Are you doing prey? Is that horror enough? That's more like just being hunted. Yeah, that kind of does fall in line of like a thriller, more of a thriller action. Yeah. So we've got two movies. Because I would would put that in the same realm of like horror action, Mm -hmm. but that also has aliens in it, and it's like, that movie don't beat aliens. Mm Mm-hmm. So... Do we put signs in there? <clears throat> hmm. I I would be okay with putting signs in there. Just the significance of how much it scared me throughout my life. Signs? Which is a lot. Oh, dude, War of the Worlds. Dude, that, that's the movie I was trying to think of and then I lost it. Tom Cruise? Yes. I but think yeah, that they didn't have Dakota Fanning? It does have Dakota Fanning, but I'm still going to say War of the Worlds. Okay. I'll that, allow it. I like, I like it. Uh, do we have our list? I'm Aliens, the, the Thing, or a, sorry, Alien, The Thing, Signs, War of the Worlds. I'm okay with it, yeah. Yeah, I'm Boom, good with we that. We got our list, and then we got what movie is, is holding up the... Uh, the gift shop, the faculty. Gift shop. Faculty. faculty. Yeah. Man, I wish Nope would have been better. Yep. I saw that. I didn't even want to mention it. Yeah. The alien can't be a spaceship, dude. You can't be a you can't be a flying hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, uh, With a black hole in the bottom of it. Yeah, you can't just be an alien manta ray and expect me to think that's cool. Like, come on. You can't just be one of Beyonce's fucking dresses on the red carpet <laughs> flying <Yeah>. around. <laughs> yeah. Some fabric, like a giant kite. God. That's what it literally was like. It was just a fucking big giant kite that was, that was hungry. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, the, I'm in the cloud. And one thing that I thought was ridiculous, I was like, "So this thing's been around for a while, yet nobody has like really seen this thing other than that uh, fucking I forget his name, Glenn from Walking Dead. <laughs> He's the only one that really knows about this." <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, man. It's like, man, how does a whole fucking town not see this shit? Right. And the whole side story about the monkey is, like, I understand, like, for the context of the movie, what they're going for, but in the actual movie watching it, it wasn't very good. 
It's yeah. viscerally cool looking or viscerally like, wow, that was intense. But like, yeah, it has, it does nothing for that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I hope he can bounce back, man. Cause I feel like he's been on a steady decline since his first movie. Get out. Yeah. Get out was a fucking 10. And then us, I would say an eight and a half. Us and is then, great until the end. Yeah. And the then it does not stick the end the landing. Yeah. And then I would give Nope a, Probably a seven. Yeah. Because there are parts of that movie up until the end where that movie is fucking great. Mm-hmm. And then when you get the kids dressed up as like the aliens inside the barn, I'm like, that's when it loses me. It's like, man, you guys fucking had this movie. And then, oh, you made the aliens kids like that's just dumb. Mm-hmm. In the trailers, they made that scene seem like it was going to be pretty intense. It's like, what the fuck mm-hmm. are we doing here? Mm-hmm. I am looking forward to uh, Jordan Peele is going to be remaking John Carpenter's The People Under the Stairs. And I'm very excited about that because that movie gave me hardcore nightmares as a kid. Good. Mm. Like, can't, I don't know. Can't wait to hear about those. Yeah. It's fucking like, oh man. It's just, it's mainly like just the first 20 minutes of that movie that really sticks in my head very viscerally, you know? Like imagine, because it's all it's, it's all about a kid, for one, a kid that gets roped in by Vin Rames of all people, really to break it. Yeah, to break into this, um, it's just like this white couple's house that they got a shit ton of locks on the doors and stuff like that. Every time they come out, they're always assholes. But it's it's said that they have a lot of money hidden somewhere in there. So he's like, I need you to. Figure out a way. You're like, you're the only one small enough that can get in here. So you get in there, you unlock everything. We come in, we take whatever we can find, and then you have uh, money for your mom's surgery. And it's a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> of course the kid's going to do it. Mm. I want to say mama. And of course, freaking white couple comes back. They fuck up Vin Rames. And they know that he's, a, they know that the little boy's in the house and they're chasing him. And then I won't give anything else away from there if you, in case you guys want to try to watch it before they come out with it. Does it kind of turn into Home Alone? <sighs> no. <laughs> you, you just end up finding out way more. You find out more people. It's called People Under the Stairs. Right. So that title's got to mean something to you. <laughs> I assume that once they get caught, they get taken down the stairs. And they join the other people that are down there. You're, you're the pretty dungeon. close. You're pretty close. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a little bit more fucked up than that. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you're pretty close. Well, I'll probably go see it with you in theater whenever it comes out. Yeah. I mean, we have seen all the Jordan Peele movies since we watched Get Out. Yeah. We were like, man, Get Out was so good. We got to see all the Jordan Peele movies now. Yeah. And uh, since then, we've been like, well, it's not as good as Get Out, but I guess it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I just want to keep supporting him so he can keep making his fucked up weird art. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's one of the reasons why I'm going to go see Terrifier 3 is because it's like, man, if I don't go see these horror movies and they don't make their money back, then I'm not going to get these good horror movies that I want. So True that. Support the arts. It's one, of the, it's one of the reasons why I definitely went and saw Midsummer, Because I was like, man, I fucking loved Hereditary so much. I was like, I gotta see Midsummer. Mm. Also why I saw The Lighthouse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not going to get into The Lighthouse. <laughs> You're fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever watch that movie. I fucking love that movie. I, I understand I mean, why Connor doesn't like it, but I love like, it. It's one of those movies where it is very interesting to watch. It's it's very like psychological and it's uh, art house for sure. Yeah, it's like descent into madness kind of thing going on with it. Um, characters like do things, and it's like, oh, this guy's like he just did this, and now he's doing this, and it's like now he's naked on the fucking lighthouse beacon yeah. thing, <laughs> drinking. It's like this is like, crazy. Yeah, you're trying to like the entire time you're kind of like trying to figure out like which one of these guys is actually going mad. You yeah, know? exactly. Is he crazy or is the other dude crazy? Yeah, huh. very much. Because like one wild. dude, one dude won't let the other dude into the top of the lighthouse, and that's part of the story. So I mean, I wouldn't say it's a bad movie. Like I know I was very hard on it earlier, but it's it's a good movie. <laughs> um, there's just some weird parts to it, is all, and some funny dialogue. 
Uh, I'll probably watch it eventually. I mean, it's got <laughs> Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. I Just mean, so two I great actors. The, I want to be in on the joke. Yeah. And the art. Yeah, yeah the art. Is. <laughs> it's one of the very few movies that I actually bought on Blu-ray. <laughs> I've well, got a very tiny Blu-ray collection. Me too. And it's one of the few Blu-rays that I have. I own the first two new Star Trek movies on Blu-ray. And then I own a Final Fantasy movie on Blu-ray. And that's it. I've got Wanted, 310 to Yuma. <laughs> Um, whatever that movie is that uh, it was like keep the, going I one where go. they put the vest on the dude the bomb vest I forget what it's called um, but yeah it's one of those like teenager movies um, bomb vest 30 minutes or less yeah that's it 30 minutes or less yeah I've got some other ones but none that I can remember well, you got Skyfall up there oh my god yeah I've got I've got Skyfall, I've got Star Wars, The Force Awakens, Westworld, Dark Knight Rises, That Thing You Do, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Weird collection. Yeah, it's one of those things where I thought Blu-ray was going to be bigger and I thought I was going to want them more. Yeah. But like, I've got so much media on digital now. It was like the same time Blu-ray was out. That's when streaming really kicked off, and like everybody started having Netflix. Mm-hmm. It's like even though the beginning Netflix wasn't that great, it was still like better than having to go to the store to get a movie or whatever or the video store. And the thing is, if you watch a Blu-ray, it's like you really see it's like, whoa, this is way more. It's like this is hardcore, way better than anything I'm watching digitally. Mm-hmm. But like, God, I don't want to go through the process of getting the disc out and stuff like that. That's why I haven't listened to any of these records in so long. It's like, man, I'm just so lazy. I want, I like instantaneous bop, 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 you know. But Blu-ray, the quality is so much better. How many Blu-rays do you think you own, Jack? Like seven or eight. Yeah. I can't remember all of them that I have. I used to have uh, the Lego movie until I let my sister borrow that and I never got that back. That was the one that had that special case for it. Yeah, and it came with like a little uh, the golden brick or something. Yeah, Ventruvius, yeah. I think is what his name was. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it came with a little Morgan Freeman character. <laughs> um, yeah. I've got Fight Club. Uh, Interstellar was one that I got. I got the metal case version of that that was a special edition. Yeah, that's and cool. And inside it came with like a little IMAX like film piece. That was pretty dope. Hmm. With, and it like the film that or the little film piece that I got was the scene of ah uh, man, what's his name? Matthew McConaughey and the uh, Anne Hathaway? Not Anne Hathaway, uh I feel bad because I can't remember his name. I I do know it. The black guy. I'm trying to remember his name. Oh, in the movie? Yeah, the one that they that goes to space with them. And they it's leave like, him there on that planet for three years. Yeah, like it, the scene is like, like the or the shot I should say is like looking directly at them, and they're pointing at the wormhole. So it's like kind of like looking at them in the ship while they're pointing. Which is, I'm glad I got that. I could have got just a fucking field of corn. <laughs> Dude, that would have been a sick piece of that film script. David Gyasi? Is that his name? Is that how you say it? I think maybe. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I didn't know his name. I was thinking of somebody different. Or maybe that dude? School principal? No, 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 no. I actually remember. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> I think it is NASA David employee. I think it is David Gayasi. Okay. I'm very sure that that is him. It looks a little bit different in that picture. Yeah, that's him. Cool. Yo, you guys want to go ahead and go into Yo Dude? Check this out. All right. What do you think, Connor? Uh, sure. Yeah. Yo, dude. Hey, yo, what's up? Check this out. Yo, dude. Yo, dude. Check this out. Um, in 1992, with uh, the U.S. men's dream team, and, like, and how they were just dominating basketball at the time, 
there was another story going on during that same Olympics, and that is the women's team actually suffered its first loss in 40 years during that Olympics, and they ended up getting the bronze. Wow. So for the first time in 40 years, they did not get gold. It's a pretty wild story. It's something I never knew. Because all you ever hear about is the dream team. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like uh, that 30 for 30 documentary that they did on the Russian team after they lost to the U.S. Mm-hmm. in uh, the hockey thing. Like they had, did a whole documentary on like those guys. And you're like, man, as soon as they came back after losing to the U.S., like nobody fucking like everyone just kind of shunned them. I was like, damn, dude, that sucks. Can you imagine like just being a hardcore kick ass winner all your life and then you lose one game and all of a sudden it's like, mm-hmm. that sucks. Yeah, because that was like them losing the war pretty much. Yeah. That, it is always a big comp- a big <laughs> dick swinging competition with yeah. the gold medals. And it's like, yeah, it was just a game. That's all it was. But just the Cold War factor of it, man. It's like yeah. it was such a big thing, man. Like we were at each other's throats. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. And then we didn't even, we still had another game left after that. After beating Russia, you know. Mm. But still, for them, like just such a big loss of honor to lose that game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unforgivable. Unforgivable, yeah, man. Throw them into Chernobyl. <laughs> Everyone talks about the game like where we just beat the Russians, not the game where we actually won the gold medal. It's right. so funny. Yeah, it's like, do you believe in miracles? We still have one more game left. <laughs> Crazy. We're going to make a whole movie, and we're going to get the guy from the thing on it. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be the coach. He's going to yell at these kids. <laughs> <laughs> when does the movie end? When we beat the Russians. I'll just t- I'll just say that we won the gold medal afterwards. Once we beat the Russians, I'll just say, yeah, we went on to beat- get the gold medal. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> no one gives a fuck about that gold medal. We beat the Russians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't even think we got you, Ivan. <laughs> Suck it, Ivan. Triple X. You both name Ivan. <laughs> uh, yo, dude, check this out. Did you guys know that? One day on the moon is equal to 29.5 days on the Earth. Isn't it, like, fixed for the most part, you know what I'm saying? As far as, like, like what side of the moon that's facing towards Earth? Yeah. Like, how fast you're rotating around the Earth or something, or what? It's, they... It, it, the, the Earth has what's called a diurnal cycle the moon doesn't have one of those don't know what the fuck that means but uh that's all i was just telling you guys i don't know any of the facts about this okay okay. yep just so you know because like the article that i was looking at said that they've come up with a they've scientists think they've come up with a way uh, like a time zone for the moon finally the time zone the the moon just didn't have a time zone there's no reason for it but eventually people are going to be on there so, they've come up with what they think is going to be the time zone. Do you guys want me to read the, read that part to you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing my eyes caught. I was like, whoa, okay. That's actually more interesting to me than fucking <laughs> the time zone is that one day is equal to 29.5 days. Yeah. I don't want to give you guys any more stats about this. <laughs> um, you can look them up, listeners. <laughs> yeah. Yo, dude, check this out. Um, semiconductors. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. Uh, Kite Man, still going. Watch the most recent episode. Bane is just like the whole reason to watch that show. Yeah. If you guys haven't checked it out, I say really go check it out. It's on HBO. Yeah, I still need to watch it. Um, it's not gonna it's not gonna blow you away, but it'll get you some laughs. If you wanna get blown away, watch Beavis and Butthead on Paramount. That's what you gotta do. Um yeah. No arguments. 
yeah, watch some watch some comedy out there. Have they announced a season three? I don't know. I know there's uh, going to be that that King of the Hill. Yeah, revive, but that's been taking all of his time. Probably. Yeah, it's like he's going to be like twenty something, or Bobby is going to be twenty years old or something like that. So that's only going to be a seven year time jump. Seven or eight year time jump. So it's not going to be like. I don't know. I got. I got to think it's probably going to start talking about all the stuff that's happened between 2000 and 2010, or maybe I don't know. I don't think it's going to be today. That's what I'm thinking. You don't think so? No. I think it'll probably be right at the beginning of smartphones. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. I. I they just need to hurry up and release it. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what it's going to be on. Hulu. Really? Yep. Do they have a release date? They do not. Hmm. At least I haven't seen one. But Wow. But yeah, definitely looking forward to King of the Hill. Mm-hmm. As long, I mean, as long as it's good, but at the same time, it's Mike Judge. Yeah, it should be good. I'm sure it'll be good. And also, um, new season of Bleach is releasing in October. So if you're out there wanting to watch Bleach, this is a good time to do it. How many Check seasons of Bleach are there? There's quite a few, but like you can skip. Like there's only like 360 episodes or so, but you can skip like a lot of it, or not a lot of it, but you could probably skip like around 100 episodes or so just off of like the filler seasons. Is there like so. a, an abridged version, like there is with Full Metal Alchemist? Um. I don't think there's an abridged version of Full Metal Alchemist. There's just the two versions. The one that was made originally that sucked because it followed its own thing. And then the real one, Brotherhood. Um, you're probably talking like more like Dragon Ball Z Kai where they cut out all the filler. Um, there's nothing like that. But the, you just have to just like... It's very obvious whenever you go from like the main content to a, a filler season. So it's just like, oh, I just got to look through all the different episodes. Because it shows them in Hulu. It's just... You just Skip skip like 60 episodes at a time. Oh, it shows it in Hulu? These are filler episodes? No, but I mean, um, the main bad guys, you can tell. It's like, oh, it went from this set of bad guys to this other set of bad guys in a different storyline. So you can kind of tell. It's like, oh, I got to find where the the correct bad guys are, you know? <laughs> it's, it's a very easy process, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, uh... Thank you guys for watching the episode. It's been episode 149. Next week's 150, obviously. That'll be our three-year anniversary as well. Fucking crazy. Try to get some good guests. I don't know. Meh. I've, I called Joe Rogan. He hasn't got back to me yet. Mm. I, th- thought, I thought he would say yes. It's 150, you know? Did you guys watch <laughs> his new uh, his stand-up no. on nah, Netflix? I still have yet to watch that. It was a live stand-up yeah. on Netflix. I watched it live for like 20 minutes, and it was like buffering a lot. It was just fucking weird. He would start doing a joke, and he would go, like, he would start doing the joke, and he would go, like, man, I went down to the to the gas station, gas station, gas station. Oh, uh, echoing. It was, uh, yeah, it was like a weird stutter. It, weird. Yeah, and we get to the point, he would go, you know what I'm saying? Because Joe Rogan does like a lot of that kind of stuff in his stand-up, and it was just the weirdest fucking thing. Me and Rachel both were like, this is watchable, but like, do we want to watch this? You ever see, sorry, you ever see Spun? Uh Uh-uh. Well, there's a point in the movie where this guy, he has sex with like a hooker or stripper or something like that, and then the movie's all about meth or whatever. They do a bunch of it. And then all of a sudden, the guy has to leave. But the girl is, like, uh, handcuffed up and stuff because that's the kind of sex they were having. And he was like, all right, I got to leave for a little bit. Um, I'll be right back. It'll, it'll only be, like, maybe two, two, three, two or three hours. And he's like, I'll put on some music for you. And then he, like, presses play on this <laughs> fucking thing. And as soon as he slams the door shut, it just starts going, bia, 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 bia. <laughs> and it's so fucking loud, man. <laughs> She's also blindfolded while this is happening. <laughs> so she's just on the fucking bed, naked, blindfolded, cuffed up. <laughs> bia, 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 bia. Nice. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. That is gonna be the like worst torture I ever did. 
All right. Yeah. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Crashing with friends. Bye.